So uh, part of what my laboratory does, uh, I work in psychopharmacology but many other areas, and part of what I try to do is to enhance cognitive function and also motivation um, in, in people with neuropsychiatric disorders, and for instance, Alzheimer's disease, ADHD, depression, other, and also in brain injury. And um, I'm also very interested in enhancing cognition and motivation in healthy people. So basically, better brain health throughout the life course. And um, we've heard from uh, Professor Akil and, and uh, Professor Hare about these systems in the brain, and I'm not going to focus too much on them, but just to point out that we've got the hot cognitive system, and that's the one that is involved in motivation, and we have the cold cognitive system, and that's involved in the uh, control. So for instance, from a neuroscience perspective, behavior change requires motivation and top-down cognitive control by the prefrontal cortex, which stops you engaging in maladaptive and harmful behaviors. And therefore, motivation is the pull, and the, uh, which promotes the behavior change, and the prefrontal cortex is a stop, which when you're doing too much behavior or the wrong behavior, it stops you. And so uh, we've heard about areas like orbital frontal cortex, and of course the ventral striatum is very important in reward systems in the brain. And this part of the uh, circuit is actually linked to the emotional brain, which includes the amygdala. So this is where the motivation all occurs. And here we have the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, which we heard about in other areas of prefrontal cortex, which is the stop. So those are, those are really very important in terms of the uh, neurobiology of promoting behavioral change. Now, psychiatric disorders are disorders of cognition, motivation, and their interaction. They're all about the way you think. And good cognition is associated with good functional outcome. So that's why we need to promote it. And I've worked on many different pieces of policy, and this one actually was done with the uh, National Academy of <coughs> Medicine in the USA, and it's looking at trying to improve cognitive function in people with depression, which is incredibly important in order to help them to get back to work. And we really want to promote successful and resilient uh, neurodevelopment. And I worked on this UK government foresight project on mental capital and well-being, and that was really looking at how we could promote good brain health throughout our whole life course and also promote well-being. And of course, good cognition is associated with good well-being. And what we demonstrated was we pulled out the factors, these are in blue, which promote uh, good cognition and good well-being, and there's such things as a good education and in uh, and, 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 uh, areas like that, exercise, things like that. And then in red, pointing downwards, are the things that detract from good cognition and good well-being, and that's things like stress and substance abuse. Now, to measure, we measure cognition objectively, so we can see that it's increasing and it's getting better, and we can study things like learning and memory, and. Uh, we do this using the CANTAB tests, which are computerized and they run on an iPad, so it's very easy to, to use these measures. One of the most important measures is episodic memory. Episodic memory is the type of memory we use every day. So when you're trying to remember where you left your mobile phone in the house, or uh, where you parked your car in a multi-story car park, trying to remember that, you're using your episodic memory. An episodic memory is the first memory to go wrong in Alzheimer's disease. And episodic memory is also very important in schizophrenia. So patients with schizophrenia have poor episodic memory, which is probably why their functionality is, is, is impaired, because many people can't go back to university after a diagnosis or go back to work. So the problem is that um, episodic memory is highly linked to functional outcome. So if we could boost episodic memory, we could have better outcomes for people. So this is the uh, way of measuring objectively episodic memory, and it's measured on an iPad, and I simply ask you to remember where that is, 
Remember where that is. Remember where that is. Remember where that is. Remember where that is. Remember where this is. And then this comes up in the middle. It should be in the middle of the screen, actually. I don't know what's happened to this that was working before. But it comes up in the middle of the screen, and what you have to do is to point to where it was, and it was up in the upper left-hand corner. So it was up here, if you recall. So how do you get people to uh, improve their cognition? Well, cognitive training works, and this is a typical thing that uh, many psychologists will use in different areas, like um, Alzheimer's disease, the very early stages, which is called mild cognitive impairment. It's also used in schizophrenia. But it's quite boring often because, uh, you know, people have to come into the hospital. They have to sit in front of a computer. There's a lot of repetition, not very interesting. So frequently there's about 40% dropout for these, uh, this cognitive training. People just don't enjoy it very much. They don't want to continue, and they don't do it. So part of what I wanted to do was to help motivate people so that they would do this and they would enjoy doing it. So we gamified it. So I actually had a games developer come into my lab and work with us so that we could make sure that this cognitive training was fun. Now the other thing about cognitive training using a game on an iPad is that you can titrate it individually. So it's like individual medicine. So as people uh, do well, uh, the, the uh, game gets more challenging, but if you're struggling a bit, it comes down. So it can be done for each individual in that way, and it can be motivating, and it can be targeted to the population you're using. So I'm going to talk about two of them. One is called Game Show, and is, this is for elderly people. We, we studied in people about age 75 who had mild cognitive impairment, the early stages of Alzheimer's disease. About 50% of these people will progress to Alzheimer's disease in one year. And I'll show you uh, our other one called Wizard, which was uh, for people with schizophrenia. Should be music with this. I know, I'm not worried about it, but it's, uh, I, I actually went through it all this morning and it was working, so. Anyway, you can see that you get rewarded and it's set up to be like a daytime television game show, which a lot of elderly people, at least in the UK, like to watch. So they're cognitively training, but they don't really realize they're doing it because they're getting lots of reward for doing it. And I wish somebody would get the technician to make sure the next ones work okay. That would be helpful. So we uh, have published on this, and we've shown that you can um, improve memory and learning uh, using this technique. And importantly, everybody's, this is, people were training for eight hours over one month, and the motivation stays high, as you can see. And people actually gain in confidence from using this, which is excellent. So that's uh, one example of how we can motivate people to do things. Well, we know that people with uh, schizophrenia have psychotic symptoms, and these are reasonably well treated with antipsychotic medication, but they have two unmet needs. One is that they have cognitive impairments, and these are actually seen as a target for treatment uh, by the FDA, and they also have motivational deficits. So that hinders their rehabilitation. So again, trying to improve cognition in this group, we use this game called WIZARD.
So this is how we can use technology uh, to motivate people and get them to uh, improve their, uh, as you can see here, they get better performance. And this actually uh, resulted also in better functional outcome in using this. And um, people with schizophrenia who are hard to get to do cognitive training love to do this, so there was no problem at all. Um, so we've transferred this to a games company in London called Peak. So now you can get it and download it on your mobile phone. If you actually look them up, you can see it on their website. And this is one way that many people can get access to this game. So it's important to make it out there as well. So the last thing I'll talk about is Dakota. And a lot of people have been having trouble with getting distracted in their daily work and reaching their goals. I mean, sometimes we come home at the end of the day and we think we've done lots of things, but then we can't think of one thing that we actually completed. And it's because, you know, we've been checking our phones and, you know, we've been interrupted by things. And so this has led to uh, Gaisley and Rosen writing a book on the distracted mind which uh, is all due to the new ways that we're working and, and so forth. So we actually developed this game to uh, help people with this problem. And this improves uh, attention in healthy people and uh, improves their concentration. And we compared it with a game of bingo, which didn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, just to conclude, um, while many people monitor their physical health using mobile devices and wearable technology to preserve their physical health, they rarely consider improving and monitoring their brain health, which we need to do. And if we're going to have good cognition and well-being throughout our whole life course, and we're living very long these days, it's imperative that we consider mental health as every bit as important as physical health. We need to move to these game-changing initiatives, which include early detection and early effective treatment of neuropsychiatric disorders. And psychiatric disorders are disorders of cognition, motivation, and their interaction. They're all about the way you think. Technology, including apps on an iPad and mobile phones, can be used for treatments, including cognitive training, and gamified cognitive training improves motivation. And um, I also work on cognitive enhancing drugs, which uh, has also been shown to improve, modafinil has been shown to improve cognition and task-related motivation. So thank you very much. <laughs>